everyone. Welcome to St. Stephen's in Sierra Vista. We're glad to have you with us. Those of you joining us online, we're glad to have as well. Um, we do have a few announcements before we begin our worship service this morning. It is Labor Day weekend, and in just a minute we're going to say a quick special prayer for Labor Day. Um, but I also want to make sure that all of you who are here and any of you watching, if you're local, um, we're going to have a cookout after this service. So you're welcome to please come. We're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers and chips and desserts, and it's going to be a feast. So we encourage you to stay after for those of you who are here. If you're watching at home, come on down after the service and join us. Uh, we'd like to have you with us. Uh, and that's just to celebrate, again, our Labor Day weekend. Um, and so we do invite you to that. The collection that we took up this uh, last month, I took le on uh, Tuesday over to Lori's place. Um, this is a, 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 an organization that helps out with uh, adults and children who have had domestic violence or sexual abuse by giving them counseling and other resources. And uh, so we responded to their request for some assistance by collecting some stuffed animals and some snacks and things and took those over. They were very appreciative. So thank you for all of you who contributed to that effort uh, by bringing something to, to drop off that we took over there. So I appreciate that. Um, our cookout is going to be enhanced by Chet and Diane Yancey, who gave us a grill. Uh, it's outside the back, and so we'll be doing the grilling out there, and we'll bring the food inside. So when you go into the parish hall, just find a place to park yourself, uh, grab a plate, fill it up, and, and sit down and, uh, and have some time of food. Um, I want to also uh, remind you that on the first Friday of the month is our film night. This past Friday, a couple of days ago, we watched The Shack, and we're going to be watching What Dreams May Come uh, on this coming uh, first Friday in October. So if you don't have any plans for your first Friday night, we start at 5. It goes usually a couple of hours, and we have a little discussion afterwards. So we uh, invite you to come to that on the first Friday of the month. Our sing-along sessions where we get together and sing, and this is not like a choir thing, this is a just-for-fun thing. And we've done it twice, and the last one we did was uh, last week, and we did the greatest hits of the 50s and 60s, and this coming time will be on September the 30th, the fourth uh, Friday of the month, and we will be singing uh, hippie protest songs from the 60s and 70s. So if you remember some of those songs and you'd like to come and sing along with us, you do not have to have a good voice. This is purely for fun. We sing to the original artist. We put the, the lyrics up on the screen in the uh, education building, and we just sing along for the fun of it. So uh, we invite you to come and join us for that on September the 30th. Um, I'm getting ready to go on my big vacation, the one that I do every year. So I'm going back east to visit with family and friends. Um, I'll be leaving on Friday, and then I'll be back uh, on the 22nd. So I'll be back um, in time for the third Sunday, uh, third weekend services. Um, and in the between, you guys will have morning prayer and evening prayer. If it's Friday, if it's a Saturday night service, it'll be evening prayer. On um, this service, will be a morning prayer service, and Dottie, our deacon, will be leading that. Um, so I'll be gone for a couple of weeks, but then I'll be back, and I'm looking forward to having some time away, and I know, as, it, as always, when you go away, it's sometimes really great to come home again, so by the time I get done, I'll be glad to be back. There are a few other announcements that are also on the uh, announcement sheet. I ask that you take that with you at the end of the service so that you have those dates and those times uh, for things that are coming up, and I call your attention to those. Before we begin this morning, as I mentioned, it is Labor Day weekend, so I have a special prayer from our Book of Common Prayer for Labor Day. So if you would, please uh, pray along with me. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives one with another that, we do, that all we do affects, for good or for ill, all lives of others. So guide us in the work that we do, that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. And, we, and as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our opening song this morning will be in the hymnal 1982. 
And that is Praise to the Living God, number 372. Please stand as you are able and sing along with us. continues at the top of page two in your bulletins. One of the things that you'll want to have handy is one of these inserts for the music called Glory to God. That will be the Gloria that we will be singing this morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Saying together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Gloria on the insert.
pray the collect for today. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make the boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first lesson is from Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, come down to the potter's house and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter had done? Says the Lord. Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil... I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And in another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look. I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now all of you from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 139, found on page 3 in your bulletin. Let us say this in unison. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it, for you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sands. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Our second lesson at the top of page four in your bulletin is from Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and know also, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I'm appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, in my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you and the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, large crowds traveling with Jesus. And he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going not to wager war against another king, will not sit down first, and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Christ. Now this morning, this is going to upset my cameraman, but I'm going way back here in the back. <laughs> What's this gentleman's name right here? Well, I am Nico. Me, you're Nico? Yeah. Nico? Wonderful. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Can I ask you a quick question? Have you ever played with clay or Play-Doh? What do you usually make out of the Play-Doh? You made a house. Right. You make animals. Yeah. yeah. How about a car? Ever made a car? No. A boat? A cup? No, no, none of those things. But you just like playing with it. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about if you knew about play you played with it. Because that's going to be what I'm going to talk to everyone else about now. So thank you, Nico, for your wait, help. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yes, sir? Is that going to be for me? Wonderful. Thank you. You're very generous. All right. So I'm going to now ask most of you all. How many crafters do we have that make things? It doesn't necessarily have to be Play-Doh and clay, but yeah, we got quite a few hands up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, those of you who have worked with pottery, maybe you've done some painting, drawing. I know you do drawing. I used to do, I used to do um, ceramics. Ceramics, yeah, making things. That's great. Um, how about uh, people that work with cloth, like uh, crocheting or knitting? Yeah, got a few of those. Or quilters. I know there was a quilter last night, Jill. Yeah. So we have this creative energy within us. And our lessons today, the first two lessons, speak about how God is also a creative force in being that potter, working with clay. And we are the clay. And the uh, psalm today talks about how God knit us together in our mother's womb how he's weaving us, our lives together. So we've got this creative imagery that we're talking about today, and I'm going to use that a little bit uh, to explain some of the other lessons that we've got going on. So when we think about it, when, uh, when God knits us together and we're born, that's not the end of our creation, right? It's not like a done deal. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm done. God continues to keep us in his hands and continues to mold us or weave us together like a tapestry that has a picture in it. And that picture changes. 
because we're made up not only of the atoms and the DNA that we get from mom and dad, but we're also made up from our life experiences, the people that are in our lives, the situations that we encounter. All of that comes together and is a part of who we are. And so sometimes God might add a little bit something. Sometimes God might take something away. Sometimes something dramatic or traumatic happens in our lives and we might have to take that whatever it was being formed and squish it down into a ball and start over to make something new. Might have to do that sometimes. Now, our other lessons today speak about that molding, that changing, that growing, that being formed by God. Our first lesson is the letter to Philemon. Um, and Paul is talking here, for those of you who aren't really um, aware of what the situation is, there is a former slave called Onesimus. And Onesimus left Philemon and found Paul somewhere else and began to learn about Jesus and began to become a believer. And now he's at that point where Paul says, you know, you really have to make this right with Philemon. And so I'm going to write a letter and I want you to go back, because he is your owner, who was a slave, but I'm going to ask him to receive you back, not as a slave, but rather as a fellow believer now. So he writes this letter that we read, and that is our third lesson today, and he explains in that how he wants Philemon to basically change. This is an opportunity for God to touch Philemon's heart and say, you know, this gentleman that you once had was property, was a slave. But now he has become a believer, and so he is an equal in Christ with you. And receive him back in that way. So here's this opportunity for Philemon to change, to grow, to become something different with regard to the uh, relationship that he had with his former slave Onesimus. When we get to our gospel reading... We have, first of all, a little bit of hyperbole from, from Jesus. Jesus says that we need to hate mom and dad and sisters and brothers and, sis, and, and, and siblings and children. He doesn't really mean hate. He's using that as an exaggeration to say, we need to know what is priority in our lives. And as the Ten Commandments have always stated, and as the summary of the Ten Commandments has always stated, the first priority is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is to love our neighbor as ourselves. So what Jesus is doing is saying, there are some people in your house, in your life, who may be offering you um, some advice, some guidance, some direction, some opinions, and those may not be in line with what God would really like you to be doing or thinking or saying. And so you need to really consider these relationships that you have with other people in your lives and see if you are putting God and God's ways first in your life or are you putting something else that somebody else has said or directed you to do or, or actions or thoughts, if you're putting those first in your life. And part of what we are called to do sometimes, it's like when you're being molded, sometimes you've got a little extra that you need to take off of what's being molded, which might be ourselves. We might have to have something removed from us to make us into this new thing that God is shaping. And sometimes those things could be relationships. Now, I don't know about you, but I have kind of a prime example of just this sort of thing that's happened I'll say over the last 10 years maybe, when social media really got to be big, of course I jumped on and I'm on Facebook. I don't do Twitter, but I do Facebook. And a lot of my friends got on. And it was good to connect with people that I hadn't talked to or known anything about in a long time. That was kind of the plus side of it. But there was a dark side to it as well. Because as things come up in life, things that happen out in the world, if I put a thought out there or an idea out there, sometimes some of these people that I thought were my friends would say really hurtful and mean things. They would not, I'm sure, if they were in front of me, say these things to my face, but because of the, the distance and sort of the anonymity of social media, people will say things that they probably would not say in person to you. 
And I tried to, when it was just a one-off kind of thing, go, okay, well, they have a different opinion on this and let it go and let it ride. But some of those folks kept saying hurtful and mean things. And I had to really weigh the cost, as our gospel talks about, of did I want these people to continue to be that present in my life? Do I want that negativity and that hurtful relationship that is happening in social media to continue? I had to weigh the cost of was it worthwhile to continue to keep them or to maybe have to pinch off a piece of clay and set it aside as part of what I was becoming? So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that some of you have had similar situations. I had to unfollow some people. I didn't unfriend anyone. I just unfollowed them so I wouldn't see their posts as frequently. But I've had to do that in a few, in a few times, in a few places. Have you all had similar kinds of things happen? Yeah? A few nodding heads? Yeah? Yeah? Now, with something like my father, he and I had diametrically opposed opinions on certain things. We just kind of agreed not to talk about those things. You know, to, to keep peace in the family, we just had to kind of say, we're not going to talk about that. Um, and that's the way that we kind of got by, by keeping the relationship, but not getting each other upset because we had those differ differing opinions. So when you've had to cut someone out of your life or limit them perhaps to a smaller part of your life, how did that feel? Disappointed. Losing. A loss. Like a loss. Yeah. Yeah. And it depends on who. It does. How so close they are to you. Friends on Facebook are people that came to me and wanted to be friends. Right. And when they get into some spaces, I'll go, okay, enough. Yeah. Sometimes they're more acquaintances than they are friends. Yeah. Confused. Confused. A relief. A relief. In some cases, because that negativity isn't in your face, as it were? Not, not confused. Not confused. Yeah, confused in the mind. Confused in the mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are, there's this cost of when we have to let someone go or we have to, to minimize how much they are in our lives because of, of things they say or things they do. That can be a cost that we have to associate with do we want this person or how much do we want this person to continue into our lives based on the direction we're trying to go, which is in a more positive and God-fearing way as opposed to a more negative way. So yeah, there's a cost that comes with that. All right, well, I'm going to ask us to now pray a little prayer. If you'll pray along with me. Divine Potter, Heavenly Weaver, as we are formed by you into a new creation, we may find that we need to move on from old ways and significant people in our lives to the new. The cost of our continuous formation may sometimes be high. Previous joys, memories, and hardships of what we have been are bits of clay and threads and colors that you mold and knit into us. Help us to trust your hands, Lord, as you bend, blend, remove, and replace them in the new work of art that we are becoming. Help us to let go of all hurts, anger, grudges, and see other people in our lives as the blessing that they are. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities to be in your hands for our new reshaping or new reweaving, our ongoing formation with you and in you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And we'll continue with the Nicene Creed found on the bottom of page 5. Saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for all salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. Those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all, all who serve, serve God in his church. O oh, Jesus, you cared for your companions and for the little ones who surrounded you. We pray for our family, friends, and neighbors, and for those for whom you have given us a special care. For the first peoples of this land, especially the Apache people, that we may honor each other and work together for our common good. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, for Grace St. Paul's in Tucson. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, for the Anglican Church of Australia. And for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Thank you, Lord, for this day, uh, Labor Day weekend, for a time of rest, for all those that are gathered here to see what's lost them. We exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For John's father, John. All those who lose their life to gun violence. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in peace of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. We are moving now from uh, the part of our service that concerns scripture and Bible into our communion part of our service. And I want uh, everyone here to be aware that all of you are welcome to come forward and receive uh, communion. 
And when you come forward, if you'll line up at one of these rails, usually this side over here and this side over here, but if there's an opening where you can fill in, doesn't matter. Um, and when you come forward, if you'll put your hands out to receive the bread, it is gluten-free bread, so if you have a gluten allergy, you don't need to worry about it. Um, and when you get the bread, if you'll hold on to it, you will also be able to intinct it. That's the fancy word for dip it into the wine. It is real wine, so if you're somebody that does not like wine, you might just want to have the bread only without the wine. Um, first you'll receive the bread, and then Dottie and Nancy will come by with the cup that has the wine. You may intinct it and then consume it. And once you're finished consuming your bread and your wine, you go back to your seat. If you are not comfortable receiving communion with us this morning, you may also come forward and just cross your arms over your chest like this, and I'll be happy to give you a blessing instead. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand as you are able and join in singing the doxology found at the top of page 8. hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return, through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Sarah and Abraham, Rebecca and Isaac, Rachel and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. people of God.
at this time in our service, we like to recognize anyone who might be celebrating a birthday or anniversary. Do we have any birthdays this week coming up? Okay then, well, happy belated birthday, and we will celebrate them today for sure. Other birthdays this week coming up or recently passed? All right, in your pews, you should find a little green card like this at the top of one side. It says, for a birthday, if you will raise your right hand and read aloud with me. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I think we have to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Domingo and Lisa. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> any, uh, yeah, and many more. Um, are there any anniversaries this week coming up? Special healing prayers. If you know of someone that uh, could use a little extra help from above in healing, Alice, you and Sandy, absolutely. For yourself? And, uh, get a name again? John. John. For John? For him. For Mark? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we'll keep praying for Mark. This comes off Thursday, praise God, I hope so. Yeah. MJ's cast comes yeah. off on Thursday. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. All right, yes. For your back. Okay, Mindy, for your back. Others that we should pray for. Who else? Yep, yep. Others? Lee and Candy, Maggie, all right, if you'll raise your right hands and say along with me the healing prayer, O God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power, that sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Do we have any travelers, people that are heading out on the highway? Yep, Pat, you're heading up to Oklahoma. I'm heading out to South Carolina and Virginia. Others? All right, so if you will join in saying the traveler's prayer at the bottom of the card. Oh God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, Preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger. And bring them in safety to their journeys in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then not on the card, but something we like to remember. Uh, the little basket that's in the back there, the one with the lid on it, that is for the rector's discretionary fund. And anything you put in there goes into a fund that I then help people in our community with. Um, utility bills or rent or other things that they need. So I don't hold on to it. I pay it back out to people that are in need in our community. And the way it goes in there is if you have something that you're grateful for, if you want to drop a penny in there, that's great. If you got a dollar or a bill of some kind you want to put in there, that's great. Um, not obligatory. It's, it's completely voluntary. But we like to hear about where you've seen God at work in your life. So where you've had a blessing or an answer to a prayer. A gratitude, something you're grateful for. Anybody have something they'd like to share this morning? Dottie? Yes, uh, a few nights ago I received a call. Just to be sure. Either turn on the mic or step up to the mic, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a few nights ago I received a telephone call from a neighbor on another street. And uh, she was in tears and said that her neighbor upstairs must have left the tub running because it was oh, no. gushing all down through her ceiling and she didn't know what to do. And I said, well, the first thing you do is you call 911 and I'll be over or I'll get somebody else to come over with me. So I was already ready for bed, so I got redressed and grabbed my phone and went over there. 
And uh, by that time, the police had come, and they had checked upstairs, but there was nothing wrong up there. It was coming through a pipe in the wall that runs, uh, that divides the bathroom, her bathroom, to uh, her kitchen. And so it was, the pipe had, a pipe had broken, mm. and it was coming through the wall, and she was sitting on the floor mm. uh, and trying to catch it and, you know, pouring it out the sink and gathering up more and more pail. So anyway, eventually, the, while the police were there, we looked around, we couldn't find any other way that it could be coming from there. And then they tried to find a way to shut the water off. Well, they couldn't find anything interior. So um, they went out and tried to turn it off with a wrench, which naturally doesn't work at the meter. In the meantime, I called the president of our association, and he got a hold of one of the maintenance men who lives out in Huachuca City. He came out and he turned it off. He had the key thing that turned it off. And so in the meantime, Liberty Utilities had also been called by one of the policemen and they didn't show up for a half an hour after it was already turned off. But that was okay because they had to go in and check it anyway. They had to go inside and check to see where it was. So as we were all leaving, um, I said, you know, well, you'll, you're going to have to call a plumber because that's not something we can fix for you. It's interior wall plumbing. So she said, well, I don't know any plumbers. I haven't been here that long. So I called the next day. I called um, a couple that were on the list of plumbers that we know. And one of them went over right away, didn't charge her for the emergency call out, and found what was wrong, tore out a little square of the drywall and fixed the pipe and was out of there and by 10 o'clock the next morning she was in good shape and so I thank God <laughs> that everybody worked quickly and for the plumber who only charged her for his time and not you know an emergency weekend of mm -hmm. things like that so all right yeah, there gratitude are for the rapid night. response yes um, I have finally been in touch with all of my friends in Pakistan who have survived the floods and now we're trying to get the organizations over there that are specifically helping in this area or that area or the other and make sure that people are in touch. So, so your people are okay? They're okay. Good. Glad to hear that. Those of you who haven't been aware, Pakistan, like a third of the country, it was underwater because yes. of the rains. It's crazy. Others, grateful, gratitude. Yes. Yes, we're glad to have your family with us here today also. And I'm grateful that we have a holiday that we can take a break, Labor Day, uh, and appreciate all those that work so hard for uh, us, for our community, for our nation. There's a place, is it called, is it a place that's for adults? Mm -hmm. It's like an ETA. It's a place for Yeah. And you're grateful for that? Yeah. Yeah, grateful for a place to go during the day. Alice? I'm grateful for my daughter being here and helping me out. Grateful for your daughter being able to help you. Absolutely, absolutely. Money. All right, then. Let's turn to our post-communion prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Amen. Heavenly Amen. Father, you Amen. have graciously Amen. accepted Amen. us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and Amen. always. Amen. Amen. People of St. Stephen's, what does God call us to do? We are called to love and serve. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in God's Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, thanks. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our closing song is in the hymnal 1982, and it is number 423, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
So